Hello, this is Philip Jers, and uh, welcome to another music theory lesson for harmonica players. Today I'm going to talk about seventh chords, and uh, I'm going to talk about the three basic seventh chords from the major scale. And uh, because I start with those, there are many more, but I will start with these uh, chords. Types. You will notice what I talk about. Anyway, uh, in my previous video I talked about uh, the diatonic chords of a major key uh, and I showed you seven different chord types that come from the major scale and actually the seven chords are built from those triads uh, just that I'm adding one note to every chord to make it sound like either a major 7, a minor 7 chord, or a minor 7 flat 5 chord, etc. And you might have heard this terminology before, but now I will, will explain it to you in detail how it works. So this, what you see here, is the C major scale. And uh, uh, the chords from this scale are... Oops! The chords from this scale are C, and then we have a D minor, we have an E minor, then we have a F major, we have a G major, we have a A minor, and we have a B diminished. And these chords are, these are the triads from the major scale. Triads. And uh, now, if you also remember, there was a kind of a nom Roman numerals system to this. This is the one chord, this is the two chord, this is the 3 minor, this is the 4 chord, this is the 5, this is the 6 minor, and this is the 7 diminished, a diminished triad. But now we're going to make, we're going to add one note to all of these. And uh, I'm just going to write it out actually uh, for you so you just kind of, yeah, so you get the answer. I will start with the scale. I will write the scale again. C, D, E. F, G, A, and B. So the first chord, uh, the first seventh chord of a major scale is the C, and that one will become a C. This one will become a C major seven. Second one, the D will become a D minor seven. The E will become a E minor seven. F will become a F major. <laughs> Oops, talking and writing at the same time. F will become a F major 7. G will become a G dominant 7, or a G7. A will become a A minor 7. And B will become a B minor 7 flat 5. And uh, how, how does this work? Well, it works like this. The C, uh, I will write this here. The C chord has these notes if it's a triad, you know, one, two, three. And to build a seventh chord, you you just walk up, uh, you walk, you you walk up from the fifth and, and add the, you skip one scale note and then you take the next note and then you have a seventh chord. So in this case, that note is a B, so it will be a C major seven. On the D minor, it's like this, and then we skip this note here, and then instead we take that one, so it becomes a D minor 7. E minor 7, same thing here. We skip this note here, take next one, and then we have an E minor 7. F major 7, like this, skip the D, take the E instead, and then we have an e, uh, F major 7. G, same thing, skip one, G7, A minor skip one and then you have a minor seven and then b you have b d f and then here you skip the g so you take the a instead and you have a b minor seven flat five and uh, how does this sound well this sounds like this c major seven d minor seven E minor 7 F major 7 G7 or G dominant 7 
A minor 7, B minor 7 flat 5. Right, isn't that a great sound? I think you might have heard those chords before in, in different kinds of music. Uh, it's very common in jazz music, uh, but many other kinds of music as well. And now, if you want to add some, um, some stuff to the Roman numerals that we wrote up here, uh, we can add, this is still the one chord, but it has this symbol, major 7. The 2 keeps this minus, which means minor, but I add a 7. E minor 7. <laughs> talking right looks like this f is the four chord and it is a major seven the g is a five chord so and just has a seven the a minor is the six chord and it has a minor seven and then the b minor seven flat five looks like this one uh, like this minor 7 flat 5 all right and uh, yeah this is it uh, no, nothing nothing more secret than that no but I mean you can un if I want to dig into this more more deeply uh, we can start by I can start to we can start to play them play them through on the harmonica that's a great thing to do so I will write out the C major 7 looks like this C E G B and then we have D F A C D F A C then we have E G B D E G B D uh, and I will skip one line to write tabs I will write F A C E uh, F no, F A C E the face chord. Uh, so that's G, B, D, and F. And then we have A minor 7. And I will soon learn you another great thing that's good to have with you. But first we will play through these sounds on our instruments. That's uh, B, D, F, natural, and A. Right. So tabs for this. Maybe you already have it. Uh, Titanic chromatic. One, two, uh, draw two, draw three. I will actually write out one system at a time. <laughs> because otherwise I need to transpose always to two. And this is boom, 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 boom. This is a two draw or two, four, and five. This is the that note, that note, and that note. And then this is that, uh, that, that, and that note. Right, that's our diatonic tab. Now I'm going to give you the chromatic tab. That's one, two, three, and four. And if you're playing along, please do that. You can start to practice now. I am just, uh, I am just, as you can see, producing material. Maybe take that one as a four blow because it's closer. So diatonic players, you can start to practice. Good, like that. No, no, I'm lying. No, I am lying for chromatic harmonica players. That one, two, five, and six, three, four, five, and six. And then we have a free draw, and then now we have five, six, seven. Then we have four draw, and then we have draw five, draw six, and draw seven. All right, now we have tabs, so let's play some music. I'm gonna start with uh, the diatonic uh, tabs this, this time, okay? So diatonic harmonica from the start, from C major seven, uh, this one here, we start up 
here now. Okay. One, two, three. Oh yeah, by the way, I'm having a C diatonic harmonica. One, two, three, four. Yeah, that's it. All right. I will talk about playing like that later on. Uh, now I'm going to play it on the chromatic. Chromatic, we start from the beginning. One, two, three, four. That's how you arpeggiate, or play the arpeggios of these chords, because we cannot play all the four notes at the same time, but we can do like this. And uh, I will just do some quick more analysis of the chord before I will talk about how to practice these, um, these seventh chords. Because if you see here, this is a C major seven. This uh, triangle here, uh, it's a symbol for major 7. And this is pronounced C major 7. Because it's this means it's a major chord. And then this means that it's a major 7. If it was written like this, it would have been a C dominant 7. Or just C 7. So this symbol, the triangle, makes it a major 7 chord. And sometimes you can also see, oops, see it written out in other music books. You might see it like this. With mage, that's also a C major 7. So don't get confused there. This and this is the same chord. Okay? Uh, and then another thing that we also should say, I mean, the notes in the, this chord is C, E, G, and B. This is the root note, this is the major third, this is the five, and then this is the seven. And this is a major triad, okay? Like we talked about in the other video. And then this is a major seven to the root note. Like so. So that is, and that's like the formula of that chord. So that, that's the same in all keys. So if I play an E major triad, add a major seven from the root. so on. So this is the same formula in all keys. And uh, to repeat, you can say like, whoops, that this is a major, big means major, it's a major third, E to G is a minor third, G to B is a major third. All right. And then for the dominant seventh chord, we can write a G7. This is pronounced G7 or G dominant 7 because sometimes some musicians say oh that's a 7th chord and then they mean major 7th but they, sh they should sometimes people should be more specific and say it's a dominant 7 but yeah it, I'm, just, I'm just teaching you some <laughs> things <laughs> that I have learned down the road uh, so this is also interesting and the notes in this chord uh, is, is uh, G, 
B, D, and F. And this here is a major triad. All right, this is a minor seventh from the root note. So this is the, let's see now, I need space. This is the one, this is the root note, this is the third, this is the five, and then this is a minor seventh. And I have added a flat before the seventh. So should you say flat seven? Uh, I don't know, English is not my main language, but I don't think so. You always say minor seven. That's a, that chord has a minor seventh, so the, or that chord has a flat seven. I don't know. Uh, I'm not the one to say the correct answer there. But uh, I think it's spelled out like a minor seventh. Because it's not a minor chord, it's the seventh that is minor. Okay. And now between G and D, you have the same major third. Between B and D, you have a minor third. Okay. And then between D and F, you have a minor so here you can see the major chord had a major third between the five and the seven the, the major seventh chord has a major third between the last two notes the dominant seventh chord has a minor third between the last two notes uh -huh. now we that's how you discover things in music theory this is pronounced d minor seven because this is the root note, this makes it minor, and this adds a 7. And then there is also the D minor major 7th chord, but I will talk about that in another video, otherwise this one will be too long. But the notes in this chord is D, F, A, C. And uh, this here is a minor triad. Okay? And then this C note is a minor 7th. And uh, uh, do, what should I say more? Yeah, between these two notes it's a minor 3rd. Between these two notes it's a major 3rd. Between these two notes it's a minor 3rd. So here you can see this formula, all these have different formulas. On the C, on the C chord, it's uh, major third, minor third, major third. On the B, domin on the B dominant seventh chord, it's a major third, minor third, minor third. And then on the D minor, on the minor seventh chord, it's a minor third, major third, minor third. So whoa, <laughs> lots of intervals thing to remember, but pretty cool, I think. It's good to to realize that this exists. And then we also have the B minor 7 flat 5. Often you see this symbol. You can also see B and then a circle with a dash through and then a 7th. Those mean the same thing. And you can also see B minor 7 flat 5 like that. But yeah, I write this way. It's the way I was taught. Um... And this one uh, has, uh, whoops, I will just do one thing here, good. Uh, these notes are B, D, F, and A. So this is the root, the minor third, and this is the uh, 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 tritone. This is a flat five, you can also say, and then this is a minor seven. So this here is a diminished triad uh, because the, it has no pure, it has no perfect fifth. And then this seventh here is, a, the seventh is a minor seven. All right. And here, let's analyze. We have a minor third between these two notes. We have a minor we have a minor third again, and look now, we have a minor third. No, we do not, Philip. Wakey pakey, we have a major third between the last two. So all of these, 
Yeah, this is kind of taking out the the. <laughs> this is really analyzing the seventh chords. But this is good to do and good to understand. And remember, as harmonica players, like okay, but the C major seven, how was it now? Well, it was like this: C, E, G, B, and. I will play it. Now use your ear. I'm starting and hold one blow on a C diatonic. Three, four. Again, three, four. Okay. And then this one here, the G7 looked like this. G, B, D, F. Right, use your ear. I'm starting on two draw, diatonic. All right, D minor, seven. Uh, looked like this. Use your ear. I'm starting on one draw, three, four. And then the last one. Um, had the notes B, D, F, and A. I'm starting on free draw on the diatonic. Free, four. All right, just do a run through on the chromatic as well. Starting on one blow for the C major seven. Free, four. G7 starting on free blow, three, four. <laughs> starting on D minor, I have one starting on one draw, uh, three, four. Starting on, on the B, I'm starting in four draw. Three, four. So ain't that beautiful that we have all these sounds? I like that. I mean, all these notes are on the harmonica. We just gotta find them and name, name them if we want. Anyway, I forgot to add on this B minor seven how it's pronounced. It's B minor seven flat five this is also sometimes called it's some people call it half diminished uh which i am not used to i i i know what a half diminished chord is it's this chord but i use b minor seven flat five it it's called half diminished diminished because it has Minor third, minor third, major third here. Uh, and if it was, if it had a minor third on the last interval, it would have been a fully diminished chord or a diminished seventh chord. <laughs> okay, now the terminology can get confusing, but half diminished or B minor seven flat five for a chord that looks like this or with a circle and, um, and a slash or dash through it. All right, I think you have learned some things now i hope or i have repeated or maybe you have you stopped the video earlier on <laughs> i don't know but this is uh, great stuff and now i will i mean this is also the same in all keys of course so if you study this formula here that i wrote down here one major seven two minor seven three minor seven four major seven five seven six minor seven 7 minor 7 flat 5 if you have that and we take a G major scale uh, C D E F sharp and then we have the same formula 1 major <laughs> major 7 2 minor 7 3 minor 7 uh, 4 uh, major 7, 5, dominant 7, 6, minor 7, and 7, 
half diminished, let's say that word, because it sounds cool. But I will write like this. Otherwise, I think you can also see it written out like this, actually. But I used the terminology that I learned, and that was this way here. All right. Uh, so what are these chords? They are G major 7, A minor 7, uh, B minor 7, C major 7, D 7, E minor 7, F sharp minor 7, flat 5. Okay, cool. So that's, I mean, you can see it's the same interval relation in all keys for this, for these seventh chords. And uh, yeah, I think there are more seventh chords. There are, I mean, the one I talked about, that's a diminished, a fully diminished uh, seventh chord, which has really that diminished sound and there is also the like like if we say a minor uh it's called uh, a minor major 7 is also a common one and it's also um another one is um uh, the augmented chord which can be which has a sharp 5 so it either it's written out like this c7 sharp 5 or it's written out C plus 7. Yeah, different traditions. Uh, but I will not talk about these in this video because I will do them in a separate video, I think. Because now I want to talk about how to practice this. <laughs> That's a good question. And, uh, and why? I mean, I would say it's really easy to find out why because it sounds lovely and it's so many songs and for improvisation and everything. It's really usable to to be able to play uh, seventh chords. And uh, I have a little document that I will show you. I will be back in just five seconds. All right, now I have some other music here in front of me. And this is like seventh chord exercises and uh, different ways of practice them. Practice them. Uh, in first version here, I'm just playing the arpeggios upwards. And then you're going down. I can switch to chromatic there. Going down. So this is a great way. It's pretty tricky because you always skip jump from like a high note to a low note. So it's good to practice that slower. And then here it's going downwards from the seventh note to the root. You know, another diatonic. So you hear it's, yeah, now I'm playing it through a bit too fast. I'm playing sloppy, I'm sorry. But I'm too excited, <laughs> maybe that's it. Anyway, now this is seventh chords up and down. And I think this one you might have heard. One, two, three, four. Sounds pretty jazzy, right? And it's, I mean, I love that sound. And then on the diatonic, one, two, three. <laughs> one, two, three. <laughs> then one can go down and then up. Right? And then you can go... Yeah, 
it's a lot easier on the chromatic because I don't have to bend <laughs> so many notes. But that also means that I need to practice my seventh chords arpeggios on the diatonic. But I will. So this is good. Wow, you learn when you teach. And if you want to get a copy of this this seventh chord exercise, I have that as a PDF on my Patreon site where you can download lots of these exercise stuff with tabs written out. I should also talk about maybe why to study all this. Well, it will give you an even deeper understanding of music theory, harmony, how chords sound, work, and how they lay out, and then what the songs are built of that we play and listen to. And uh, you will also learn a lot of knowledge on your instrument, kind of tone layout, uh, flexibility, agility and arpeggios, jumping between holes and blow and draw on the harmonica. And also all of these uh, seventh chords are really useful when building improvisations because so many jazz solos are built on, on just playing seventh chords, arpeggios. And then you kind of say, these are the chord tones, or these are um, the arpeggios of, um, of those chords. And uh, yeah, so I think it's really good to study all this if you want to dig into more, dig into more type, I mean, get deeper in the improvisation language and expand your tonal language when doing improvisations. It's really good to to study seventh chords, and also you will become more kind of in depth. In depth, <laughs> that's hard to say for me. You will get uh, a better, yeah. I mean, layout knowledge on your instrument. You really know what notes you are playing. And for me, I mean, I love music theory. It's so cool. It's really like. Studying music theory has really made me become a better musician. I really think studying theory helps. It It is confusing <laughs> at times, but uh, it in the long run, it only really helps for me to develop as a musician, improviser and composer. All right, I think that was everything in this video. Welcome to write and ask me if you have any questions. I've been talking about the uh, seventh chords found in the major scale and there are other seven chords that you can find in other scales but these are the most common ones so i thought i would start with these but all right have a great day keep playing harmonica have fun okay bye bye